We got another good one. AFC's matchup in Ralph Wilson Stadium. Bill Belichick and the Patriots taking on Rex Ryan and the Bills. Tom Brady is 23-3 in his career against Buffalo. Brady's 23 wins are his most against any team. FYI, LaShawn McCoy was pulled out of practice on Thursday because of tightness in his hamstring. Rex said he hopes McCoy should be able to go. New England is a one-point favorite. It is close. Stephen A., Will Buffalo pull out the upset? I'm picking Buffalo for the upset in this game, Skip Bayless. It's in Buffalo. That crowd will be raucous. Tyrod Taylor, I think, poses an di entirely different problem uh, for the New England Patriots defense than quarterbacks they're accustomed to going up against. Obviously, he's incredibly mobile. He can move very, very well. Plus, he's got um, an underrated ability to throw. He was impressive. He completed he about 73% of his passes last week, um, albeit against the Indianapolis Colts, and we understand uh, that these guys can play. I don't like the fact that LaShawn McCoy is out, but Carlos Williams should be able to do some things. We'll see what happens. You still got We're not him. sure about LaShawn. That's we? right. We're not sure no. about him. We're not sure about him. We don't no. know, but he left practice due to yeah. his hamstring, so chances are he's not going to be anywhere near 100%. He's listed as questionable right yeah, now. Yeah, he's going to be listed as questionable. So, uh, But I just think that defense is got, they've got the personnel all of itself to go after Tom Brady. But when you combine that with the mind that Rex Ryan has on the defensive side of the ball, his familiarity with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, um, I just think the combination of it all with New England coming into, into the house puts the Buffalo Bills in prime position to knock off the Patriots in an upset victory. I think it'll be tight. I don't think it'll be that high scoring, but I'm going to pick the Buffalo Bills to win like 21 to 18. Okay. 21 to 18? I, seriously, I do like your pick because I really like this Bills team. I picked them before the year started to be a wild card, and I certainly stand by that. And I'm becoming... As Molly knows, a Tyrod Taylor fan. Me too. We, we both, you, before you got here yesterday, we were talking about his Sports Center interview with Lindsey Zarniak. So and it, it was just, it was captivating. But he is a first time starter. First game he ever started was last Sunday. That one was against the Indianapolis Colts defense. This is against Bill Belichick. And we saw what a Dick LeBeau could do to a Jameis Winston. Not that I'm comparing Tyrod and Jameis, because Tyrod's been around for, what is it, four years now. But in this case, you are going up against a Belichick, and th this time I don't just have a feeling, I have a conviction about this one. I, I think New England's going to prove to be just a little better than Buffalo, and I think they are going to delight in proving that at Buffalo this early in the season. I'm going to go 24 to 21. I know my score is close, but, but I think that you'll walk away from this one saying, and eh, New England's just a little bit better. And I'm back to the theory that you and I kicked around before the year started about deflate gate. Remember what happened after spy gate? And, and I didn't love that because they were clearly caught red handed cheating with spy gate. And then they said, OK, NFL, if you're going to punish us, we're going to punish you game after game after game. And they punished the NFL all the way to the Super Bowl. And Sessions. then something else happened mm -hmm. this time. You could argue that that it took a lot of the, the sting out of it. It took some of the emotion out of it that Brady was exonerated, at least so far, yeah. before appeals court. Yet, I just have a feeling that Tom Brady is saying, you put me through deflate gate National Football League, I'm going to take it out on opponent after opponent after opponent. And if I'm right about that, you're going to see the first real sign of that Sunday at Buffalo because this will be difficult. And I think you're going to see psycho Tom, as I call him, in all his glory. You're going to see emotions spilling over. You're going to see headbutts with Gronkowski. You're going to see Tom Brady at the highest level against a guy. And I call him Rex Ryan has been Hex Ryan against Tom Brady because he had he has he has had his number. But this time, I think all of Rex's bluster and all his showmanship and all that he has said about the Patriots this week this time will not distract Tom Brady. I think it will infuriate him. I think it will bring the very best out of him in that, that he's going to delight in taking it out on Rex Ryan this time. And just a quick point of order, and I know what you're going to say about this, but it was intriguing to me against your Pittsburgh Steelers, against blitzes by the Steelers defense. Tom Brady went 8 out of 10 with four touchdown passes. Now, obviously, obviously, the Steelers' defense is not the Bills' defense coached by Rex Ryan, Dennis Thurman. But still, 
Brady can beat the blitz with the best of them. In fact, I think he is the best blitz beater there is. He's going to see a whole lot of blitzes this time. They're going to come from everywhere, any way, all ways. What, whatever Rex can cook up, it will get thrown in Brady's face. He does have Ryan Wendell back at center. Remember, they had yep. to start three rookies in the middle of the offensive line against Pittsburgh, and wow. I can't believe they survived. So he's back, so that helps just a little bit. And now for my X Factor. I mentioned this yesterday. With all the focus and attention on Gronkowski, mm. there's this guy named Scott Chandler, who happens play. to be a little bit bigger than Gronkowski is. 6'7", 260. Really? Wow. And, and he's been playing the last eight years in Buffalo, New York. So he is going back, quote unquote, home. And I just have a feeling that Tom Brady is going to say to Rex, you know, you talked and talked about King Kong on, Re on Gronkowski. Watch what I'm going to do with Scott Chandler this time. I think Tom Brady will feature Scott Chandler. Two tight ends. You can put three on Gronk if that's what you think you need to do. And Scott Chandler is going to have single coverage on somebody who's eight inches shorter. And Tom Brady is going to throw it to Scott Chandler. And I loved what Edelman did in the opener. And he's still going to be a force. And I love what Deion Lewis coming from nowhere after two years out of football did. LeGarrette Blunt is back. So that will help because now you have a sledgehammer back back there. So I, I just think the Patriots are really good, and I think Tyrod will struggle a little bit more against this New England defense than he did against the Indy Colts defense. I hear you, Skip Bayless. And I'm just looking at Scott Chandler's numbers, and he's got about last year in Buffalo, had about 47 receptions for nearly 500 yards. You know, and I'm not knocking him because sometimes when you play with greatness, it elevates your level of play. Mm -hmm. And I understand that he, by, by, by association with the New England Patriots, he can end up being all of that. But he hasn't been yet, mm -mm. despite his physicality, his physical frame, being six feet seven, mm -hmm. 250 pounds. Now, playing alongside Rob Gronkowski certainly won't hurt anybody, and I get all of that. But I also will remind you again, we've got Marcel Darius coming back. Oh. you still got Kyle Williams. you got oh. Mario Williams. Yes, you, you got do. Jerry Hughes and these boys. It's hell you don't necessarily have to send the house to get to Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. You understand? You can back up a little bit in the coverage. You can sit there and rush four, maybe five you at can. the most, and really, really get at Tom Brady. Sometimes you can rush three, considering the studs that they have on their, in, mm -hmm. in terms of their front and, and seven. And when you do get so, to him, he will tap dance well, like, like the late, late great Gregory, Gregory Hines. Hines. I need to get that on the so, record today, just the, in case Mr. Point, Brady's watching. Well, well, so what? Here's yeah. the deal. What you need to pay attention mm -hmm. to is that Sometimes Rex Ryan acts like that knockout puncher. And what I mean by that is I'm willing to take two or three blows to get one good look. Now, in Tom Brady's case, I think you may see scenarios and situations where Rex Ryan will take a chance just to put some licks on him, just to soften him up. Yeah. Just to sit there and humble him just a little bit so ultimately he does find himself tap dancing. And I think those are the kind of things that you have to take into consideration. Granted, Tom Brady has stomped Rex Ryan in the past, winning 45-3 to in a regular season game when he was the coach of the New York Jets. But that same season, a month later, he went. Rex Ryan took his Jets back up to New England and they won 28-21 in a playoff game. So I just look at it from the perspective I don't know if Rex Ryan has ever had this level of talent on a defense. I'm talking about in terms of being a head coach. Now, some would argue he had it to some degree in Baltimore. Like, oh, like, definitely the, in Baltimore. The, I thought you were just doing the Jets. No, 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 no. And with the Jets, he had a strong secondary. He sure did. Okay, not necessarily a strong front, front seven. Yeah. You didn't have guys that can get at the quarterback. Not like Rex Ryan guys. didn't yeah. have that. You had guys in Baltimore who could really coverage, who would put some licks on you, who could defend, mm -hmm. who were wise and smart. But I don't know if they had a front seven that could get to the quarterback like these dudes. They lead the league to in the sacks, interceptions since uh, 2013. That's even before Rex. There you go. So that's before Rex, man. And now you've got Rex there. It's going to be real interesting. 
It's gonna be real interesting. It's, the, it's really about the Rex Rex mania combined with the home crowd, combined with it being early and New England still having things to figure out. I think that's why I'm going with Buffalo in this particular game. I know they're not better than New England. I don't expect them to win when they go to New England. But because of the moment, how early it is in the season, and how the Bills and that city are still riding that Rex mania momentum, I think this is. I think that the Patriots are right to be had just in this particular game. What a Sunday this is going to be. Yes. It's this is a tough one Ooh. to pick. So, Stephen, you have the Bills 21 Wait, you have a to 18. Pick? No, you don't. You don't have to. This one's tough. Oh, I'm hearing I think Patriots. I hear, I'm I, hearing I hear Patri Bills. I'm hearing Bills. No? Cause you got, by the end of got, the show, I'm going to have a pick. Really? Yeah, really? Is by that the what, end of the so, show. So we know, I, I all, think, we knew all coming into the show, we were going to have to make some picks. Yeah. And you need another hour and a half? 20, I need to think about oh, it. Yeah. My, I need to I, think, I think a little more. I think you become a Tyrod fan, Molly, and Molly, it's okay, Molly. and you can pick the Bills. Yeah. Listen, when I picked with you last night, we saw how that worked out. <laughs> we have a rematch of last year's NFC Championship in Lambeau. We all remember that onside kick and how that one ended. Will the Packers redeem themselves and knock off the Seahawks this time around? We'll discuss. And I'm going with the Bills. I knew it.